And, and Odin's here too. Odin's here Odin's on the picture show. in picture cam. Let me slide down for him. He's, He's dressed up for the occasion. He probably wants out of the suit. But too bad. Tux is tonight, bro. Absolutely. That's what we're doing. Even so, mommy's dressed up. <laughs> So, so tonight, tonight for this episode, episode we're going to do kind of like an, an ode to small plates around the world and, you know, like we're going to have like a cocktails and small plates kind of dinner kind of thing, but either one of us drink alcohol, yeah. so we're doing non-alcoholic mocktails tonight. Um, so basically what I just did is I did some fun flavored syrups and we're going to add them to some sparkling waters and we're going to have some food that goes along with those. We'll go over the menu as we, you know, go over each course. We're going to have three different courses tonight. Um, I think the format that we're going to take tonight is a little different than what we've usually done in the past. I think what we're going to do is we're going to make a course, and then we're going to sit down and eat that course, and then we'll do a little quick reset, and we'll do that for each course. That way we don't let our food or our drinks get watered down and or cold food. So, um yeah, I'm just going to get started here, guys, by doing a little chop chop for our first course. Uh, okay, yeah, we're good. I just wanted to make sure. We're good to go? Okay, yeah. cool. Do you want to do mic check at all? Mic check? So I'm guessing everything's good? Yeah, I can hear it. You have an echo, though. It might be the multi-cam setup. Okay, so one of them needs to be muted. I will just... Um
How's, How's that? that? Can everyone, everyone hear us now? Did, Did I, I just go, go that whole time, time without anyone being able to hear us? I'm so sorry, Chef. I've been working really hard. Uh, no, no, hey, it was me. I think I hit the. I was the one that hit the mute button on the wrong one. Oh. Okay. So that was that was totally my bad, guys. Sorry, I uh, inadvertently hit the wrong mute button and uh, sent us into silent mode. But we have sound back, I can tell. Yes, we have sound. Yeah. Sorry for the technical difficulties. <laughs> Sorry for the technical difficulties, guys. Like I said, this is only the third live stream that we're doing. We've got all new equipment. We've got new software programs that we're trying to do all this, like, multi-camera, picture-in-picture stuff in, and we're still trying to figure it out. So, you know, give us a couple episodes. We'll get into the swing of things. Like I said, here at Chef Beardman Live with Happy Girl Mantra, super chill and relaxed. You know, we're just having a fun time. Just two friends cooking dinner, eating some food. Talking, talking with you guys on the internet. That's, that's what this is all about at the end of the day. It's not about, like, you, you know, know, trying to put on something perfect and, you know, just staged to every T cross and every I dotted. This is not that. This is imperfect, and it's perfect in its imperfectness. So, guys, I got that little ponzu sauce made. So, just to go over that again in case the mic was off, I did a fine mince on... Some, some lemongrass, and, and I added the coconut, coconut aminos, aminos, which is a soy-free soy alternative to, co to soy, soy sauce, because Happy Girl right here cannot have soy. soy. So, so we use coconut, coconut aminos instead of soy. soy. But, but it is a little bit sweeter, so you kind of have to adjust your recipe accordingly. So, so what, what I did is I had the uh, lime juice, the uh, lemongrass, and, and the coconut aminos, aminos in there. there. Um, so, so what we're going to do, this is the sauce for our tuna. I've got our tuna right here already ready to go into the pan, and I'm just going to glove up, season our tuna, and then give it a sear in our ripping hot pan that we got going on back here. And I'm just going to put a splish splash of avocado oil in the pan. Now, avocado is a high heat oil, and it is a very healthy oil for you, too. So I'm just going to give this tuna a little seasoning with some togarashi spice, which is a Japanese seven pepper spice. Season both sides because like uh, our boy Emerald said back in the day, I don't know where you come from, but where I come from, my tuna doesn't come seasoned on both sides. So we're going to season both sides of our tuna like Chef Emerald would like. So now that we've got that all seasoned up, we're going to transfer over to our pan and we're going to just spread that oil out and then go straight into the pan with our tuna pieces take this over to the sink and we're going to let that sear on both sides for like a good minute maybe a minute and a half depending on how hot the pan gets per side maybe only 30 seconds this seems to be going pretty good and you don't want to take that tuna too far it's, it's good, good tuna, so why ruin it? Happy, if you don't mind, I'm just gonna reach for my tongs right here. Real quick. Out of your way entirely, chef. No worries. Get you a little bit of B roll. So, so since, since we're gonna, gonna do some, some mocktails tonight, tonight I'm, I'm gonna enlist Happy Girl to uh, help, help us make those mocktails. She's, She's gonna, gonna kind of. Help me bartend tonight, as it were, a little bit. So, she'll get some some time other than just in the picture and picture for you guys. So we're gonna flip that tuna. It's been about what, like 30, 45 seconds. I'm just keeping some motion in the pan here, guys, so the heat. See, when you got a hot pan going, you're gonna create a hot spot if you let the food to stay in one spot and if you move it around you kind of keep the heat evenly distributed all over and the food actually sears quicker this way and you get a more even sear on your meat let's take a look there see look how how good that got already that fast 
Except could I borrow you for some technical, technical stuff? stuff? Yeah, yeah, of course. course. They, they want, want me out, out of the bottom, bottom right corner, corner and somewhere else. Okay, so what we'll have to do is do that. How's that? Boom. Yay. Is that, that good? good? Yeah, but they say there's still an echo. echo. So I don't understand. Well. Ah, it's mine. Got it. Is that better? So we're taking our Should tuna, guys, out. and we just got it seared. I'm going to let it rest for a minute. Um, in the meantime, I'm just going to do a little wipe down. Keep everything clean. So I've got some purple sticky rice that I've already prepared over here. And I'm going to get our plates set up. We said bowls for the tuna, right? Yes. Yes, we did. So I've got these nice little bowls right here, guys. Then I'm going to set up into do a fun little molded rice action. We like to make it look pretty. You know, doing stuff like this at home is a fun way for you to, you know, entertain your friends or if you want to do like a date night, you know, and keep the budget kind of low key instead of like going out to the restaurant and dropping two hundo, two fifty on a night out at a restaurant, you know, impress your SO with, you know, cooking them a nice dinner and, you know, doing the, the niceties of, you know, a little fancy plating here and there, you know, just to give them that restaurant quality feel. Make them feel special, you know. Put that love into the dish. Okay, so we've got our rice kind of set up right here, guys. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to slice up some tuna. And since we're keeping the plate small, we're going to do three right over the top. A little snack. Oh, yeah. Mm. Now, Delicious. guys, I'm going to warn you right now that Togarashi spice that I put on there didn't have any salt on it and I didn't salt the tuna intentionally because the ponzu sauce is a salty sauce. So you don't want to make the mistake of trying to over season and then when you're going to eat it, it's a salt bomb because you accidentally salted your tuna too much when you're using a salty sauce on top of it. So I'm just going to save that piece over there maybe for Odin later. So I'm just going to take the cutting board guys and I'm going to clear it off and I'm going to get us ready to make our mocktail. So this is, like I said, our play on a margarita, but not lemon and lime. And I've got some fun broccoli sprouts to go on top of that. Oh my gosh. Oop. Look at that, ain't that pretty? And then we're going to grab our ponzu. We're kind of gonna just do a little 
action Johnny Drizzle right there on it. And then we're going to make our mocktail, guys, and then we're going to sit down and enjoy this course before we move on to the next one. I've got that right there to kind of rim the glasses because behind door number one right here, we've got our bubbly Topo Chico. We've got some nice lemongrass, kefir, lime, leaf infused simple syrup. Now that's made with agave syrup, kefir limes, and chopped up lemongrass, kind of like steeped like a tea in distilled water. And uh, then I add agave syrup to, you know, to the sweetness level that I want for it. So what we've got here are our nice little glasses. I'm going to just get the rim moist right there. And then we're going to dunk into our lemongrass and salt so this is kind of like that play on the margarita, like we said, where you do a salted rim, right, guys? But we're, we added lemongrass to our salt so we can echo those flavors into the syrup. Pull it towards the middle. They're not seeing what you're doing because of the picture and picture cam. Sorry. No, it's my bad. I'm so sorry. And we've got these nice glasses right there now. So, Happy, if you want to come over and give us about like a two-ounce pour of syrup, into those guys and then if you have the bottle opener for that we'll pop open the topo it's a kangaroo paw the <laughs> noise good day mate <laughs> when i was a kid growing up crocodile dundee was like my favorite movie man and when crocodile dundee 2 came out i was like wow how could they even make it even better than the first one by going to Australia is how you make it better, like and stay in there for an extended period of time. Can I show my ice cubes? Yes, of course, show the ice cubes. So I got some really cool silicone molds and I made a bunch of little um, confetti lemon and lime zest cubes. I'm making a mess. Those things were a pain in the booty to demold. <laughs> they were. I was so told. She did I all the work, I just heard everything. Uh huh. <laughs> These are lemon and lime zest um, gems as well. And then we're going to go ahead and put our syrup. Let's go ahead and go one more ounce. One more ounce? Yeah. Her chef. This is all new, you know. We're just, we're just playing right here. We didn't, we didn't pre-make any of this stuff. We're just going off the cuff. Pretty fun. Experimentation. Absolutely. We did get fun containers, though. <laughs> yes. I, I love those acrylic milk cartons. They are so fun. It takes me back to middle school and elementary school. Mm -hmm. And good. And then right. we're just going to top it off with a little of that, and then I'll get a get our favorite friend a little knife to stir. And I realize we don't have to completely change our set. We can just focus on the happy cam. Okay, that's cool too. Mm -hmm. Would you like some more topo? Yeah, 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 yeah. For sure, for sure. Perfect. Is everything going good, guys? I'm seeing, uh, I'm actually seeing some activity in the chat. I can't see what it is yet, but Let's I see that there see. is activity. I see some can people. You take my last bottle. Hmm? Did you take somebody's last bottle? I did not take mom's last bottle. I <laughs> bought my own two bottles that I ended up not needing. <laughs> yes, because Happy has them. Yes, she does. So, where do we want to sit? We are just... In our gonna, usual spots? Yeah. I'm just going to move this, and then we can just move the Happy Cam. Happy, come on. Come on down, bud. Come on. He's like, I really like this part, though. I really like the food part. Odin, Odin, Odin. Okay, so we're going to remove a few things from scene. Just reset the odal cakes. Okay, we've got our drinks. We've got our tuna. I just have to get us a couple of 
items to eat with. Bada boom, bada boom. Okay, and then we're gonna go. All you gotta do is to switch the inputs. This over here. Yeah. We might want to tilt that oh, down yeah. with the Jeep food. I only have two hands working on it. <laughs> oh, I was about to do it. I got you. All right. Let me know when. A little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. Boom. Very good. Can I temporarily end the mainstream? Hmm? Can I temporarily move this angle? Oh, yes. Because we're... Um, that might be the time delay. No, just hold on. Oh, you're using your cam and I put it as the picture-in-picture. Yes, picture. Okay. So we're just trying to get around there. So I might have to... Well, hold on. Let it... It's, we're super laggy, so just hold on a second so we can see where we're actually at. Yeah, so we want to be this main camera. Okay, now sit down so we can see if it's <laughs> catching up. Okay, now we should be picture in picture. Sorry, guys. Like I said, it's all trying to uh, figure out this whole new camera setup, you know, with the program. Funny that my mom thought I took the last ball of her <laughs> ago. Yo, Tiffany is in the house. Yo, what's up? We can hear you, but it's super echoed. I hope we're way down here. Okay. Okay, there it goes. Perfect. Sweet. Okay, much better. Okay. So, Tiff, what up? Tiffany's one of my really good friends from back in the day at River City Grill back in Punta Gorda. She was a server there when I was back in the kitchen, just a little line cook. And we had such a tight knit group. Like, I can't remember, like, we would literally go out drinking every night of the week. Oof. as a group like three three to four of us cooks in like the whole serving crew <laughs> out of the bar like as yeah. a huge gang of people just showing up and uh yeah tiff and i have been through quite a few hurricanes together too just like everyone Hurricane. down there in Punta Gorda. okay so yeah you want to snap a pic before we picture it didn't happen mm -hmm. so we're going to snap some pictures of the cocktail in the main uh, entree here for the first course so we can uh, get some fun stuff to post up after the show for you too guys because we're all about that added content you know here at Chef Beardman Live it's going to be good stuff I love the ice cubes though they look so good in there thank you So if you guys have any uh, questions, you know, just uh, be sure to type them in the chat. Let us know. Um, I can do 500 at work, but for two at home, I'm totally in the weeds. Dude, that is so true, man, because we're used to, like, cooking in large numbers, and then we have to, like, downsize everything in our brains, and we're like, well, how does this, like, work cooking for just two people? <laughs> Steve-O saying what up to Tiff. Oh, good. Get the chat talking to each other. You guys need to talk to each other, too. They're really good about that. Yeah. It's kind of like a social hour online, too. Right. Exactly. We should send out the recipes ahead of time and be like, cook and eat with us. Oh, now you're asking for too much work for me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay, so dig in. Yeah. Cheers first. Cheers. Salute. Oh, let me rest my beard. Mm. Mm. That is good. Yeah. The salt on the rim with the sweetness mm. from the drink. Right? That's it's kind so of good. just like a margarita, but now we're not going to get like stupid wasted. Oh, no. <laughs> no, but like, we're, we're going to get super hydrated. That's for sure. We're not getting tequila drunk. <laughs> I've seen that before. It's not a fun time. Yeah. I mean, you think... It still has that essence of lemon and lime to it, 
it's super familiar in flavor. Mm -hmm. It's just not like as acidic as a lemon and lime drink would be. No, it's so good. I love the sweetness of the agave. Yeah. Such a wonderful touch. Which shows to which goes to show you guys, you don't have to use, you know, like white sugar to make your simple syrups. You know, you can use agave syrup, maple syrup, um, if you're fancy and want to use a refined sugar, you can use Demerata. Tequila makes me naked. It makes everyone naked, Steve-O. What's like the famous quote? Um, tequila makes her clothes fall off. Oh, this is a country song. Yeah. <laughs> Oof. That's my past coming up to haunt me. <laughs> I think Happy Girl likes that mocktail right there. It's so good. All right. Okay, let's dig into that tuna. So excited. Hmm. So, guys, I seasoned mm -hmm. that purple sticky rice with a little bit of mirin, rice wine vinegar, and I sweetened it with the agave syrup and added a little salt to it like you would with when you're seasoning sushi rice, or sushi rice, mm -hmm. sorry, mouthful. So, it's like that perfectly, like, salt, sweet, sour, kind of hit to the rice, too. And then you've got the seven chili pepper spice on the tuna with the hemp seeds and the little bit of spice from the broccoli sprouts. So, I mean, in the ponzu, the salt comes from there. It's pretty dang good. It's super good. I love the tuna. I love tuna. Thank mm. you so much. Guys. Oh, yeah. Of course. Nothing but a trip to Whole Foods, y'all. You can get Saku blocks in the seafood section at your local Whole Foods most of the time. Or if they don't have it on the shelf, usually you can just talk to the fishmonger and they can cut you up a piece of Saku block mm -hmm. to take home if you want to do some sushi. And usually they have sushi grade salmon there too, guys. So not to like toot Whole Foods horn or anything like that, but you don't have to go to the sushi restaurant to be able to do this kind of stuff. You know, you can do this at home and not have to spend an absorbent amount of money to try to get good, you know, fish. Mm -hmm. And I'm actually going to eat this time, I promise. I won't just leave half my plate. Mm -hmm. Is it Ooh. tough to find seafood in CO? Or Colorado? Not really. No, uh-uh. Well, we've got purveyors that do the same thing. I can get the same Hawaiian fish program flown in for like 25 bucks a pound like everyone else can. Actually, I think it's up to 35 bucks a pound now. Um, but yeah, seafood's readily available here. And actually, there's some really good sushi places down in Denver. Mm -hmm. huh. Fun fact, mm -hmm. Colorado has more scuba divers per capita than any other state because of how easy it is to get from Denver to either coast. It's an eight-hour flight to Hawaii, four hours to Mexico, hmm. four and a half to Florida. Wow. And I think from there, a couple to... The Caribbean for some really awesome scuba diving and snorkeling. I wonder why there were so many scuba diving stores mm -hmm. around the area. It's like, are these people like diving at the reservoir? Mm -hmm. That doesn't. <laughs> yes. Yes. You can get open water certified at Arapaho, ba um, Arapaho Reservoir, mm -hmm. which is terrifying. <laughs> the water is really, really hot. So I got certified in Santa Rosa, New Mexico at the Blue Hole, mm -hmm. which was gorgeous. Very, very cold. <laughs> I bet. When you lived in Florida, did you ever get to go to any of the natural springs? Um, yeah, there? we went to Silver Springs up in North Florida a lot. Mm -hmm. My grandma is, well, my great grandma was in Micanopy, Florida. Mm -hmm. And there's a couple of springs pretty close to there. Oh, yeah. Um, I think there's one called Manatee. Oh, yeah, there's Manatee Springs. We've been there a few times. Yeah, we'd do the glass bottom boats. Nice. Mm -hmm. Or the hop in the tube and just mm -hmm. go down the trail. There are some fun things to do there. I'm bummed I never oh, went to. Oh, and the most Subarus per capita, Steve says. <laughs> yes, that is correct. Colorado does have the most Subarus per capita. I have other comments to make, but I will refrain from making them. <laughs> I'm going to call it right there. I think that's sufficiently cleared my plate. 
I think I won. Did you save room for the next dish? I did. But now that I'm trying to race you to the finish. But <laughs> I'm just... Chefs are naturally fast eaters, guys. We have limited time, limited resources. We should usually just shove it down your face and get back to work. I have to learn how to slow down when it comes <laughs> to that kind of stuff. Thank you. I can also say... Hold on. It's a lake in Osceola County. Let me clear my mouth and I'm going to say it properly because I'm really proud of it. It took me five years to get permission to call it its abbreviation. I'm going to have to take my time on that drink. That's good. I'm not mm -hmm. getting up yet. <laughs> I actually want to finish this guy. So, I grew up in St. Cloud, Florida, mm -hmm. which is next to Kissimmee, which is in Osceola County. We have two lakes, East Lake Sahapalagika and Lake Sahapalagika. Sahapalagika is in St. Cloud. Mm -hmm. You are only allowed to call it Lake Toho if you are a native and grew up saying it correctly or you say it correctly to enough people to get permission to call it Lake Toho. Okay. And I'm very proud to still be able to do it. And I've been out of Florida for 22 years now. Wow. And not looking back either. <laughs> no. I do need to go back and see my mom, but that'll be a fun trip. I, not that I ever doubt myself when I come up with these like harebrained ideas for recipes sometimes, but that lemongrass salt really did come out way better than I thought it was. Like I had expectations that it was going to be like kind of cool, but it really did add another level to the drink. Well, and what I love about it, too, is it really adds a pop to the entire drink. Right. Which is something I think is so important about choosing your beverage with your food. Right. How many times have you had food sent back because it tastes weird, and then you look at their drink order? Mm -hmm. Or do you even think to right. tell your servers that that matters? It does. Pairing does matter, guys. You know, it, it, you have to put a little bit of thought into even when it's non-alcoholic. You know, and especially when it's alcoholic, but, oh, my mom loves your outfit. Thank you. <laughs> um, but, you know, the important thing is, is that there are items that tie mm -hmm. the drink and the dish together. I intentionally added lemongrass to both dishes. You know, there's the agave syrup in the ponzu sauce and in the drink itself. So there are these connections that bring everything together when you taste it as a cohesive, you know, like take a sip, take a bite, take a bite, take a sip, you know. I probably say it wrong. I've been in Colorado. Wow. Oh, I left St. Cloud 22 years ago. I was like, I haven't been here 22 years. I say it ure. Like hooray, but ure. Correct me if I'm wrong, please. So I think we got into the groove of things with the whole technical side now. Mm -hmm. We got mics working. We got no echoes. The echo problem, guys, is that sometimes the way that this program works is that the I forget to... problem, Chef, <laughs> was we forgot we had a yeah, cam. Exactly. And I forgot total. to mute the third cam and there was an echo on that third mm -hmm. cam. <laughs> and then for a while there, I muted the main view. <laughs> so, yeah, you can't do Oops. that either. <laughs> Awesome. Well, I cleaned my plate. Yes, you did. Now we got to do is clean our glasses. I've been waiting all day. <laughs> right? This is like my favorite thing. Is favorite when we sit part down and eat the good food. Right. And see, like I said earlier, you don't have to go out to the restaurant. You can, but you can do this stuff at home too, guys. You know, like uh, that's the whole point of doing this here with us at Chef Beer Man Live. On YouTube, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon so you can be with us every time that we go live. You know, um, you're on low power mode on your iPad. Just no, I got that, no problem. And uh, just in time for a reset. So I'm gonna finish my drink here, guys, and then I'm gonna go back around. We're gonna start our second course, which is gonna be the lamb kebab. Which Odin taste tested the lamb, and it is Odie Cakes approved. So it is. We are good it. to go. There he is with his tuxedo. Mm -hmm. 
All right. So now I don't like tequila good. drinks, but I'll drink the heck out of that guy. Absolutely. Do I so power plug this into here, Chef? Say that one more time. I'm sorry. No, because the microphone thing's in it. Okay. And I realized that when I. Okay. I was like, ooh, one or the other, I guess. All right. Well, we need to switch your cameras around on the screen. I think we just have to hit. And then we're back. I'm just going to do a quick clean on our pan here, guys, because I'm going to use it to sear up our lamb kebab after we make it. Lamb kebab is going to be really simple. We'll go back here and we'll get our pan <clears throat> going again. I'm going to get some. Leave my drink right there. Bring my knife over so I can do some chopping. I think that's all I need. So we're going to clean the pith off of our bell pepper because that is not tasty stuff and we don't want not tasty stuff in our food. We only want the sweet pepper, not the, not the bitter pith. So we always remove that part. I uh, once worked for a guy. I won't give him the uh, the honor of showing telling his name, but he once made me taste that pith, and because I left it in a pepper one time, and I learned not to leave that pith in the pepper anymore because it's I not tasty. Like okay, so we got some bell pepper going. I'm just gonna grab one of my other little storage cups. Move that there. Grab my towel. Towel, towel, towel. Grab a little red onion. And I've got some herbs over here that I'm gonna grab from the uh from the pantry guys I've got some cilantro some mint that's coming with me over here so we're gonna do a little fine dice on this red onion <laughs> yes Odin I know he's like can I please have some food please I like snacks a lot keep your knife sharp guys that's the key Okay, we only need a little bit of red onion. We're not doing a whole bunch of... We're just making kebabs for two people. I'm not making a party's worth. So you got to remember not to over prep. I only need like a quarter of an onion for two people. Mm -hmm. So we got our fresh mint. We're just going to give that a little choppy chop. Same thing with the cilantro, guys. We're just going to give our herbs a little choppage. Do you have a bowl that I could mix into? How big do you need it, Chef? Uh, large enough to mix that stuff with this ground lamb that I've got right here. Ooh. Absolutely. Let me just think where I put it. Oh, crap. So I know this looks like a lot of herb, <laughs> a lot of mint, guys, but uh, I want those fresh herbal flavors to come through on the kebab so i'm gonna use a lot of it i'm gonna be liberal take us to flavor town correct i never wanted a guy to take me there though that's not a place i wanted to go with him perfect who better than guy though uh i'll take myself to flavor town i don't need you to take <laughs> me there I don't know. He's got some sick rides. <laughs> I I could never get behind that whole thing that came about with him with the um, uh, the visor with the spiked hair. 
<laughs> you know? Yeah. You know who he's really good friends with? Who's that? Uh, one of the singers from, I believe, Chumba Wumba. <laughs> um, that makes a whole lot of sense. That answers so many questions. I was uh, <laughs> I was watching this. I like to play disc golf uh, as my hobby. So I was watching this one disc golf video, and I found out that Andrew Zimmern is a huge disc golf fan, mm. and uh, you know likes to go to tournament. Just just likes to show up at tournaments just to like say, "Hey, Andrew Zimmern's here." That's amazing. One thing you should know about that dude. If you're in line at the Minnesota State Fair to get beer at the Minnesota State Fair and you happen to see Andrew Zimmern in the beer line, do not try to talk to him or say hi to him because he will not be nice to you if you're talking to him in the beer line at the Minnesota State Fair. Just <laughs> you know, throwing shade. I don't care. He was mean to me. <laughs> Hurt my feelings. He's like, I'm trying to get beer. I just I'm wanted to say to I like your style, homie. <laughs> I got to meet him. Um, I worked at a European deli in Cherry Creek. Um, it's still around. They've been around for almost 40 years now. It's pretty impressive. But they make gluten tongwurst and head cheese and liverwurst and um, Braunschweiger, all the good stuff. And because they do these blue sausages during the Christmas time for the Swiss Germans, Zimmerman came in to kind of like talk about it. And it was pretty interesting because our deli was not, you know, like some of these fancy show sets you see. Right. It's very mom and pop, but it was it was really cool. He what, was in the zone, though. Was that when he was doing, like, the Bizarre Foods <laughs> yes. thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> the Bizarre Foods I days. don't know if our episode ever aired. Um, oh. I guess some make don't just, like, hit the cutting room floor and just don't make it. Yeah, sometimes. The... What's wrong, bud? So we've got all of our fun vegetables and herbs that we just did in there. I'm putting a little salt in there, guys. Stop. Season up that meat. I'm going to add a little spice to that, too. A little garam masala. Spice that up. I'm going to take a picture, Chef. Yeah, yeah. You get that picture. Okay, now we're going to get in there with our hands and we're going to mix everything up. Mm. And this is how we make the meat for the kebab. Now notice I'm not adding any filler like breadcrumbs or eggs. I'm just going to, you know, fold this stuff into the meat and the meat will... We don't need any filler for this. It's just a kebab. It's not meatloaf. Plus... Happy Girl Matra can't have gluten anyway, so we don't want to use breadcrumbs. No, thank you. Okay, so we've got that all ready to go. I've also got some... Oh, wow, look at that. So we're just going to get like a nice little group of that stuff. We're going to make our kebab. Boom, boom, boom. That's one kebab. And I think we're only going to need two kebabs. One for each of us. That's a lot of kebab. That's a lot of kebab. Mm -hmm. So we're just going to form it around the kebab, guys. So it stays on there. The kebab. Is that when your Minnesota comes out? Kebab. The kebab. I spent six years in Minnesota, guys. So, you know, the accent comes through sometimes. Oh, Don't yeah, you know. You know. I know some Oli and Sven jokes too, don't you oh, know? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, you betcha. <laughs> you betcha, don't you know? I've been to a few Twins games and some Gopher games. Okay, so we've got our kebabs right there. We've got our pan getting hot, guys. It's I'm going hot, to hot, hot. add a little avocado oil. Today we're cooking with avocado oil. It's a high heat tolerant oil. It's also one of those oils that Happy Girl doesn't have an aversion to. No, and the awesome thing about it is it kind of tastes like butter. Right. So we're just going to add those to the pan, and we're going to let those go.
like I planned that they fit so perfectly. They do. So while those kebabs are going, guys, I'm going to get a little slaw going for us for those. And I'm just going to hop behind Happy Girl right here, and I'm going to give the cutting board a little washi wipe. And then we're going to make some slaw to go with our... Uh, Pobo says no need for a binder. No need for a binder on this one. The meat is the binder. I mean, you can, you can use eggs and stuff like that, but with the kebab and I'm pan searing them, that, it's not like I'm doing it on an open heat grill where it's going to fall through. Um, I'm kind of just looking to go all lamb and no filler, you know? Give those a little flippy dooski there. And I'm going to put the uh, lid on those guys. And kind of let a natural steam build up in there. And while we let that happen, I'm just going to adjust my heat. I'm going to get some cabbage and a carrot going. And we're going to make some slaw. Odin! He's like, hey man, sorry. I was come, busy. You come join us, brah. We're just going to do a little carrot peel. Bada bing, bada boom. Take these outer layers of the cabbage off. So, because we did rice on the first course, guys, I didn't want to go too heavy with the second course. So, we're just going to do a nice light vegetable slaw for that second course. We got the uh, pan going over there good. Let's give it a little... All the water's just dripping back into the pan. Allowing the steam to build up in there. Set it off to the side. Now we only need a little bit of this cabbage for both of us, so I'm not gonna go crazy and chop the whole thing. We're just gonna take part of the head. The Off cabbage. with his head! Off with his head! So I think what I want to do is keep the profile small and we will just do a nice thing. Chop on our cabbage. Maybe a little bit more. Would you like a bowl for your slaw? Please and thank you. So guys, with the slaw light here, what we're going to do is we're just going to do a little vinegar slaw. I'm not going to... They don't use mayonnaise in the Middle East for their slaws. I hate to ruin that for you. But uh, yeah, we're just going to do a little vinegar slaw action right here. Thank you. Awesome. Let's get the Odie cam on. All right, Odin, you're in charge of the chat. Odin, don't let them like take you over, okay, bro? You, exactly. you moderate. You moderate hard. No means no, Odin. So we're just getting those carrots nice and thin, guys, so we can do a little thin ribbons on them. Yes. He's like, that's my favorite of things. So we'll just add our carrots to our slaw. Put this over here. <laughs> I'm going to do a little turn on our kebab. Let those go a little bit more. Yeah, that's great. Okay, so what I'm going to do here, guys, is I've got some sherry vinegar. And I'm going to hit that with 
Boom, boom, boom. And of course, you know, when we're sweetening things up, we're using that agave syrup. Throw a little coconut amino in there for some salt, but we're also going to add a little bit of salt too, just to help break down that cabbage. And then we're going to also go back to our accents, right guys, because we put these herbs in the kebab. We're going to also put them in our slaw. That way we tie all of our flavors together, right? So we'll get our cilantro all chopped up. And then the mocktail, guys, that's going to go with this is what I did is I made a simple syrup where I infuse that simple syrup um, with toasted cumin seed and some orange peel. And I let that steep like a tea for about maybe four or five hours. And uh, yeah, then we got our cumin and uh, orange simple syrup to go along with our lamb kebab today. Kebab. Kebab. Okay, we'll get some mint chopped up and go in that slaw. And then after I get done making the slaw and taking the kebabs off, I've got a couple sauces that are going to go with it. And then we're going to sit down and we're going to eat again. And then, guys, the third course is going to come really quick because, hey, I'm not baking a cake from scratch here for you. I made that cake ahead of time. Cake! <laughs> Hate to ruin that for you, but the uh, magic of television does not work for a uh, cake. You want to make that guy ahead of time. Cake, 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 cake. Oh, are you excited about It's cake? a special request cake because I uh, gave Happy Girl Madre here carte blanche to name any kind of cake that she wanted in the world. And I would come up with a gluten-free version of it. And she just like gave me like a softball pitch layup and just said, I want a chocolate cake with strawberries. And I was like, done. <laughs> That's easy, girl. We can do that. So here we are. We got chocolate cake with strawberries tonight. Let's get a picture of these kebabs. So. Yeah. Kebab. They're kebabbing. Oh, that's a good kebab. Oh, yeah. Okay, so I've got everything in there right now, guys. And we're just going to give this a little stir up. Get those marinades all over the cabbages and the carrots. And this is kind of like our little salad, you know, that's going to go with our kebab. Now, I could have done a hummus, you know, underneath too. And if you're just doing this as just like a single course where you're not doing multi, multi courses and having a whole bunch of stuff, go ahead and add a hummus. You know, it'd be great filler on the bottom of the plate too, you know, to have that, that bean puree going with the whole thing. But I don't want to weigh us down too much because we still got a cake and another drink to get through too. Two more drinks, cake. a cake and a kebab to oh, get through. Oh, I'm so excited about this cake and so, this next drink. I'm so excited. So we're just trying to save room for everything, guys. So I'm keeping, that's the whole point of small plates is to keep it small. They didn't cut, they're not calling it big plates. They're calling it small plates. Okay, so we've got our nice little fun rectangle plates right there. And we're going to go with a little slaw action right there in the middle of each plate. And then... We're going to grab our kebab. 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 And then I've got some sauces. So I pre-made some sauces here, guys. Sorry I didn't make them for you on camera. But um, you know what? I'll teach you how to make them if you uh, go back to YouTube later and you check out our uh, YouTube page. I'll have some instructional videos posted up there. What I made is a traditional garlic sauce in the uh, Middle Eastern diaspora called Tum. It's a garlic emulsion. It's just made with uh, pureeing garlic with some lemon juice and emulsifying oil into it. 
Um, I used avocado oil because, like I said, Happy Girl doesn't do seed oils. Um, and you know what? Coconut oil isn't the exact right kind of oil for this because its melting point is a little too low. And uh, you want something that's going to stay liquid at room temperature for this kind of application. So, you know, avocado oil was probably the, the best solution for the job on this one. And then I also made a tahini sauce. So tahini is a sesame seed paste. And I mix that with lime juice, uh, cilantro, and um, a little bit of water just to thin it out. Because when you add acid to tahini paste, it thickens up really quick. And you kind of have to thin everything down. So we're just going to do a little drizz and a splash. A little drizz and a splash there for that. And it's impossible to make two tablespoons of this sauce, guys. So you kind of have to make more than you're going to need. So, you know, have you can use it for other things. It's great, like, if you're going to do up some grilled chicken later on in the week and you want to have these sauces, you know, for your chicken later on, that's a really great idea, too. I'm probably going to end up leaving these here for Happy Girl, and she'll use them during the week for her meals. I'll put them on my skewers. So we got that tahini and cilantro sauce that we're just going to drizz. And pop, pop and lock it, yo. And then I've also got some red onions that I pickled up earlier, guys, that we're going to put on there for a little garnish. And it's going to be lovely. Oh, wait till you see this B roll, chef. I can't wait to see that beautiful B roll. <laughs> what? Okay, so we've got some pickled red onion. And I'm just going to. Glove up before I put it on there. And then we're going to make the mocktail, guys. So we'll have to get the next one going. Some pickled red onion. Pickled red onion. Oh, yeah. Okay, stove is off. Perfect. We'll need a new bottle of Topo, probably. Oh, indeed we will. Good. Oh. Pardon me, guys. The That's Topo the was topo. coming up. That's the Topo. It's Topo's the, coming out to say it's hi. The, it's the bubbliest sparkling water out there, guys. It is. While Happy Girl is playing bartender for us, I'm going to uh, go ahead and wipe down the cutting board. Are we going to go with three ounces again, Chef? Yes, we're going to go with three ounces again. Perfect. That seemed to work pretty good last time, and I... Tried my best to keep the concentration of sweetness equal in all syrups. So when we were going to make those measurements, we could pretty much stay equal all around. Now, I'll uh, tell you a little secret for the last drink. I don't want to spoil it right now, but I didn't use agave syrup in that. I used maple syrup Ooh. in, the, uh, in the, uh, the last drink because I like the smokiness. Of the maple syrup with those Bengal spices. Absolutely. Um, so these are freshly squeezed cara cara and cilantro um, juice. Yeah, tell us about spheres. The, she made some nice spheres, and those uh, those came out a little bit easier than the other ones, didn't they? Indeed. And I will tell you, I infused the orange juice with the cilantro overnight before making them, and the juice smelled and tasted amazing. The trick is getting it to melt down in time. Let me go rinse off our stirring knife. Honestly, I just wanted the cool effect of the cubes in a clear glass because I watch too much Instagram reels. Right. And I'm like, I could do that. I don't have a reason to, but I could do it. Right. And now I have a reason to. Exactly. Odin, you got off your camera. You know, this does help with the bubbles, though. It does. You're deflating it just a little bit. Indeed. Making it just a touch flat. A little, a little slice, Chef. Little twist. 
Sure. If I sliced it and go as good as I wanted it to. We'll just have it hug. And just we all need a big, we all need a hug every now and then. Indeed. I'm gonna borrow one of your boss white. Okay, I've got forks ready for us. Yay! Do a quick little reset. Yeah, we're gonna just do a quick little reset, guys, and then we'll be right back with you when we switch cameras. <laughs> I feel like the two stooges Happy and a dog. Going on, man. There we go. Tell me if that looks okay in frame, y'all. Perfect. I think we're good. Dead ass. All right. Here's your extra drink. Thank you. Thank extra you. drink. Get a couple pixers if you don't mind. Odin. He is so into this right now. Plus, I have a certain snack hidden in my waistband. Oh, <laughs> he smells it and he wants it. Indeed, he does. Go ahead and pull this in front of you with your drink, please. <clears throat> Carrot out of here. <laughs> How do you know you were a drama kid? <laughs> Perfect. Awesome. That's right. Love it, love it, love That's it. That's how we do. All right, bugaroo. Here you go. Yeah. Okay. Let's okay. see what's happening in the chat. Whoops. We're all the way down at the bottom. Um, Odin, who's your favorite kid, Loki or Hela? Uh, probably Hela, because he loves to destroy everything. Um, you, I, I, can you, Steve-O, I wasn't there to see what you said. That should be on a shirt. What should be on a shirt? Yes, agreed. I'd like to know. I can um, screen print. I'm guessing I need to move. Stupid picture in picture. It's blocking me. Whatever, guys. Yeah. You don't need to see my face. You can see me on the picture in picture guy. Uh, no, we can. It, it's just a fact of the. There we go. Aha, guys. And then we'll switch over there in a minute because we're on a delay. And all lamb, no filler. Oh, all lamb, no filler. Yes. Yeah. You, I, I moved the camera, Mom. Just give me a minute. Yep. There we go. Haha. -ha, it's moving. Yay. Yep. Now you can see me. Here I am, guys. We never Full went frame. anywhere. Yes, Odin. <laughs> no, you want lamb. Did you eat that whole thing already? Oh, my gosh. You did. Okay. okay. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers to course two. Yo. Yum. Mm hmm. That Ooh. toasted cumin. Yeah, and it'll get better as the cubes melt. Yes. And as we get deeper, because I couldn't get the stir. Mm -hmm. like, if you see the settle mm -hmm. down there, the syrup's still mostly down yeah. at the bottom of the glass. That's the I downside with the cubes. I couldn't get the like deep stir on it. Stir. And they're just like hugged in there. So I'm just gonna yoink that guy off. Oh, we do that? Yeah. Yeah, just use your fork to kind of. Oh, Shoot there you it go. Shoot across the room. Yeah. <laughs> that would so be me. <laughs> <laughs> like, well, I guess I'm cleaning. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah. That's what's up. The drinks sound and look good. Uh -huh. Nice. I mean, when you want to, you don't have to, you can mimic those flavor profiles that you see in your fancy bar programs all over the place. I mean, they're basically just, whenever I make these infused simple syrups, 
those are things that they do at the bar level in your high end bars today to make all their fun cocktails. Yes. I'm just 86ing the, the booze mm -hmm. and substituting that alcohol with the sparkling water. That's really the only secret, guys. It's like a, a fancy, like, uh, Fancy soda pop, more mm -hmm. or less, you know. So there's ways to, you know, you don't have to just be a water drinker or, you know, you know, just, wow. you can have fun with the drinks too. You don't have to just be resigned to like juice, water, Gatorade, things like that. You can make fun drinks out there. And actually, surprisingly enough, there's a lot of companies out there today that are getting into the mocktail market. Yeah. So I'm sure if you look around your grocery stores, you're going to find more and more stuff coming up these days that I cater to so. non-alcoholic people. The ones that I've found are all subscription-based. Really? But they're adaptogenic drinks. What you will see a lot today, guys, is those probiotic sodas. Mm -hmm. They're all over every store nowadays. Um, energy drinks. Yeah. I love this um, garlic whip. Right? I forgot what it's called. Tomb. T O U M. Um, when I worked at the Mediterranean Cafe in St. Paul, Minnesota, people would just buy this just to dip on their fries. Mm. Oh, yeah. Right? Sweet potato fries would be so good. We did those waffle cut sweet potato fries. Mm hmm. And you could just like get like a fat doll of that. Oh, oh yeah. Really good. Guys, I wish you could taste these kebabs. The kebabs be kebabby. <laughs> Alinea has a whole mocktail book. I love Alinea. Called Zero. Grant is incredible. Oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. And to think he did so much without taste for so long. Right. I mean. And that slaw, I whipped that out in five minutes. And how mm -hmm. much flavor does it have in it? Oh, so much. And I love it with the pickled onions. Right. The contrast is so good. And those pickled onions I made right before we went live, guys. It was mm -hmm. one of the last things that I did. So they were just pickling for like maybe 20, 30 minutes. It doesn't take long to get a pickle going. Mm -mm. You know. Oh, you got to do a hot pickle. Yeah, all hot you got to take a lot longer. Yeah, yeah. If you just get the uh, pickling liquid hot, what I did was I got some rice wine vinegar, a little mirin. Basically, it was the same seasoning method that I used for the rice. I just made it a little less potent for the uh, pickles, and then got that liquid really hot, poured it over the onions, and just let it set until I was ready for them. Bada bing, bada boom. Mm -hmm. Easy peasy. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to make pickles. No. I think Odin wants my lamb kebab. He does. I gave him a chewy that usually takes him like five minutes, and he inhaled it. I, I'm scheduling him a vet appointment. He, he, <laughs> he liked the lamb that I gave him earlier, and he's oh, like, he I did. want more. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm excited. I feel like we're going to have some really good like post-show content mm -hmm. i apologize for my camera being on frames i'm still trying to figure out my spatial awareness but i want some of these steps to kind of like live longer than just the show right to show people how accessible this is how easy it is so many times i hear people saying oh i don't know how to cut things sharp knife hold your hand right and just get comfortable. Cut with intention. Mm -hmm. You know? You cannot cut distracted. If you're having to force your knife through stuff, you're doing too much work. Right. You know? Every every tool should be an enhancement and an extension of your hands in the kitchen. Sorry, guys. I'm really loving this kebab. It's so good. I've been, been focusing on it and not the drink, huh? <laughs> I'm letting you eat for once. Right. <laughs> it's good. It's really good. Mm -hmm. Okay, there we go. Now we got to the syrup. Yeah, good. Yeah. You just have to get a little bit down there. 
Yeah, the cubes kind of fused together. I wonder if it would have been better to drop the cubes in after. You never know, man. <laughs> the topo's not losing its fizz. No, that topo is solid. Mm -hmm. Okay, try that. Thank you, Chef. Yes. One more. We're going to have to make a shirt that has like a subtle, like, burp. Where it like starts real small font and then gets larger. <laughs> wow. And be like, the topo has entered the chat. <laughs> <laughs> be a whole, uh, do a topo chico. Well, this is kind of like a topo chico themed dinner, I guess. Sponsor us, mm. guys. You want topo chico? You want to sponsor us? We're really good. I'll give you those good recipes to go with your sparkling water. You don't Absolutely. have to do that. Those uh, substandard flavored can things that you do. Yeah, those are rough. Yeah. I like the idea. But I don't like really any of those flavored sparkling waters. The flavor is I love the LaCroix memes where they're saying like how um strawberry LaCroix tastes like it was made in the vicinity of a strawberry. <laughs> but not quite a strawberry. Or I'm pretty sure this is what TV static tastes like. Right. Wow. Pretty tasty. And I thought I was the eater. Mm. <laughs> Usually I clean my plate. Now chef's cleaning me. Pretty tasty. Tight blends back in action. So, Happy Girl wouldn't know about this. Back in the day, when I was a little line cook at River City Grill in Punta Gorda, Florida, me and a group of my friends, we started this t-shirt company called Type Blunts. I love it. And uh, I was the graphic artist for the, for the thing, and I just stylized our name that I got copyrighted, Type Blunts, you know, in different fonts and styles on shirts and hoodies mm -hmm. and stuff like that. And it got really popular in our hometown. But, you know, much like a lot of things, I was the only one that was like really putting the effort into it. And I couldn't sustain it just by myself. I but I that. think I was 10 years too early before the whole, you the know, legalization and thing. Dynasty and, yeah. Oh, yeah. But the whole legalization thing, you know, Stop. but. Everybody you know, can hear you squeaking. If anyone wants to like help your boy bring tight blunts back to life, holler at me. We'll mm -hmm. bring it back. I still own the copyrights. I also own the copyrights for loose blunts too, because I didn't want anyone like hopping on me with the loose blunts like, you know, come back. Very smart. Very smart. Okay. Of the two drinks we've had so far, can you even pick a favorite? Dude, um I was just in love with that salt rim. Mm -hmm. on that guy indeed i mean i like the flavor of this one but i mean just i i surprised myself with that oh yeah that was delicious because it was like a last minute addition because originally i had a different garnish with it i can't even remember what i had typed before and then i was like no i i kind of want to play margarita on this and margaritas have a salt rim and i was like what can i Lemongrass, I'll just top up the lemongrass and add to the salt, and we'll do the salt rim. Mm -hmm. And it worked out. So, pretty happy it did. Yeah, this is good. Yeah. I would say this one's sweeter. It is. Much sweeter. Because we don't, well, we also don't have the salt contrast to it either. True. I bet if you took a sip of that without the salt. It would be sweet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Although, I don't know, because as these cubes have melted down, we've got some <sighs> lemon and lime juice in there. Right. So, some acid pop. Yep. Let's try it afterwards now. Topo Chico coming up to visit. <laughs> Pretty sweet. Pretty sweet without the salt. Mm hmm. Yeah. You know, it almost tastes like a flat sprite. Right. But like a way better. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. But that salt action. That is everything. Mm-hmm. 
I just like if you learn any sex. lessons from tonight, take a take a cocktail, take a non-alcoholic cocktail and salt the rim. Mm -hmm. Yeah, then try it that way. The I, zest is not a win. Mm, maybe because if you chew it, right? Like I worked really hard to get most of my zest non-pithy because mm -hmm. the pithy is disgusting. Um, if you don't like pith, do not do marmalade because marmalade <laughs> has the full pithy rind. Blah. Um, I have to get you that really fine microplane, probably. Yes, yes. I think you know. I did. I did pretty okay, and then the next lemon wasn't so firm, and it got like really pithy. So, but overall, I think the first cocktail is going to be my winner so far. I reserve the right to change my mind after the last one because we still have one more awesome one. I to think go. we're really excited about the last one, guys. Mm -hmm. Number one cake. <laughs> Had a vinegar-based drink called a shrub in Savannah. Yes, yeah, shrubs mm -hmm. are, you know, that uh, back in the way back in the day, the temperance era. You know, when they you know outlawed booze um, after the Civil War, they uh, tried this whole thing where they're like, "Yeah, we're not going to let the country have any alcohol," and you know, that didn't work out too good. But in order to still have something refreshing back in the day that wasn't alcoholic. They would take vinegar and sweeten it and then cut it with water. And that's what's called a shrub, guys. It's just a, you know, people pay high dollars now to get those vinegar shots at the grocery store. I was just going to say, oh, so you mean a sweetened version of an apple cider vinegar? Yeah. Because that's what is all the rage in the health community exactly. right Exactly, yeah, yeah. Oh, I start my morning with a diluted apple cider vinegar and make sure to rinse your mouth after because of your teeth. I know. It's, it's funny how that stuff becomes cyclical. It's, uh, yeah. <laughs> it just comes back around. They're like, hey, what was this thing that they were doing back in the day? Oh, cool. Let's do that. They always we can't come say, up with anything more, you know, we can't come up with anything original. So we're just yeah. going to like take the past idea and like redress it up just a little bit. Just put a new name on it. Tie it with a bow. Right. So guys, the, uh, the last course coming up is going to be really simple. The cake's already made and all we got to do is, uh, make the mocktail that's going with it. It's going to be a little play on a white Russian. If any of you guys have seen the, uh, the movie, The Big Lebowski, our boy, the dude, the duder, the, the duderino, dude. the dude man, the dude meister, he uh, loved a good Caucasian. So Let's we're going to- Let's go ahead and stay like this since we don't have that much to do for it. Yeah, for sure. Go ahead and keep talking. I'm going to um, bring the things over from the fridge to make it. We'll make the mocktail right here in front of you. And I'll bring the cake out of the fridge, too. So just give me a second to grab that stuff. Yay. Oh, perfect. So, Happy Girl, this is going to be a little bit different than last time because I'm going to have to do a little pre-infusion with the topo of the vanilla syrup that we have. Okay. Go ahead and tilt that camera down a little bit so they can see our prep. Okie dokie. On um, this one. Really brought the really brought the room together. Oh. Okay, pop that guy. Is this for it? Yes, it is. This is our coconut chantilly. Cake. Put this more secure so we can cut it real quick. <clears throat> We're just going to do a little clean up here, guys, so we can get the cake all situated. Gordon's like, let me get in the frame. Let me get in the frame. I helped. Um, if you want, Happy Girl, we can take that over to the cutting board and I'll dismount it from the, you know, from the platter that's underneath it. Perfect. And then I will. Uh, I forgot about that. Cut it all proper, like you know. Right. I'm gonna. I'm gonna move these over here real quick. Okay. And. Uh,
Odin. Odin's in the camera. Odin's taking up all the camera times. He's like, yeah, I need to be in the camera. Okay, guys, so I've got our chocolate cake right here. And I'm just going to give us a little cut ski. Odin, a little close, bud. Okay, so we've got two plates. Don't even need our platter. You know, we're going to reserve the right to eat another slice, guys. All the slices. Oh, then. He's like, what? I'm just sniffering it. I didn't even look at it, I promise. Mm. Okay. Okay, so I've got a little coconut chantilly. It's just some coconut cream sweetened with a little agave syrup. Delicious. And then we've got it worked didn't okay. work as much as I wanted it to. Probably your desiccated idea would have been better. Yeah, who knows? Next time. Right? So, what I need is do we have, can you just empty out that um, last drink that I had with the lemon lime one? Oh, I can just get you a cup. Okay, that's cool too, yeah. I wasn't sure how we were going to infuse it if you were just going to pour it into the topo. Yeah, I'm kind of just going to. And then these are some coconut water cinnamon small ice cubes. And I'm just infusing our Topo Chico with some vanilla syrup right here, guys. <laughs> Watch his snoot, they said. Oh, he's sniffing so hard, Chef. He is absolutely interested. Okay, so we're gonna take our Bengal spice infused coconut milk here, guys. And we're just gonna, I'm gonna free pour. Yeah. That'd be so yummy. I think that looks good. And then. Boom, boom. And then we're going to give it a little stir. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa, that's foaming up. Oh, boy. <laughs> that's foaming. <laughs> that topo. Oh, that got slushy down there. Yeah, that's the thing. Those coconut cubes, they are high sugar count. So they just kind of split apart. Not exactly a bad thing. <clears throat> okay. Okay, guys. Okay, 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 chef. Are we ready? We are ready. Odin, you ready? He's that was born ready. Last course. Okay, chocolate cake, guys. Gluten free chocolate cake. Strawberry compote layer. Chocolate ganache layer with a. Uh, 
HU chocolate, you know, certified, you know, what's it called? Um, Cruelty free chocolate? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. And a coconut chantilly Yum. on top. Oh, the oh, yes. Can't break tradition. Cheers. Yes. Mm. Oh, yummy. Oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. You know what? It It's so weird to say it, but it tastes and smells like a root beer float. Right. Or like a sarsaparilla float. Mm -hmm. Oh, my gosh. Right? It's so yummy. Isn't that fun? Mm. And I love all the vanilla bean and... Yeah, the vanilla bean foam up on top. That's amazing. That's gentilly cream is perfect. Oh, boy. Mm. Mm. It's fudgy. Mm -hmm. Now, I just went with some small pieces here, guys, because this is a rich cake. Mm -hmm. What did you end up deciding to do for the strawberries? Well, I tried this oven-dried strawberry thing. I just didn't like the texture that came out. Okay. So I took fresh strawberries and just, you know, made a cook-down compote. There you go. Agave syrup and the strawberries in the pan. That's it. And just let it reduce down. Mm. Really delicious. Really simple. Little cornstarch at the end just to bind everything mm -hmm. together. But yeah. At uh, Johnson and Wales, during stock soups and sauces, our assignment from Chef Woodruff, Miami campus. <laughs> In case you went through the Shout same out. hell. In case you went through the same hell. Not only did we have to be immaculate for lineup because Johnson and Wales was found on a military handbook, you have to be immaculate for lineup at 7 a.m. Most chefs wanted you to have a capital T, just iron line down, sorry, just a straight iron line down the middle, right? Uh -huh. The spine line. Chef Woodruff wanted a capital T, which means you have to press it from the back arm sleeve to the back arm sleeve completely across and then down but not all the way up to the neck yeah can't look like there can't be any possible crossing tea. it has to be perfect capital t mm. on top of it everybody had to do the exact same assignment every class year in year out didn't matter oh wow and it's write a five page paper on a scoffier that's it she just wants you to write a five page paper on a scoffier, mm -hmm. the father of stock soups and sauces. Mm -hmm. I took the book and I was inspired by the different ways that you can thicken a stock soup or sauce. Arrowroot, cornstarch, potato, uh, aroo. I know that there's more agar agar. Um, all these different like thickening agents. Yeah. Uh, I think even sea moss and seaweeds can thicken. Oh yeah, definitely. <clears throat> so it was really inspired and I wrote this August Escoffier inspired paper on thickening agents. Mm -hmm. I got a I got a fail. She was like, rewrite my paper. This isn't what I asked for. I asked you to write to me about a Escoffier. I was like, this is how he inspired me because I'm yeah. I'm reading his book and I'm figuring out like, wow, who would have known all of these amazing ways to like thicken things? Yeah. And one makes it clear and one makes it cloudy and one makes it, you know, so funny. Yeah, they didn't <laughs> encourage free thinking. No. You know? They just <laughs> wanted you very... to they basically just wanted you to write an autobiography or a biography on him. Mm -hmm. Just like like, no, we don't want your we don't want your opinion. <laughs> we just want you to tell us about him. <laughs> Five pages though. Five pages on Escoffier. They have that Escoffier cooking school in Boulder. They do. Yeah, I've seen the kitchen. The and I was very shocked because I mean I went to Johnson and Wales, mm -hmm. and even CIA in Florida, well, not CIA, um, the Cordon Bleu. Sorry. Yeah, um, even they had immaculate facilities. August Escoffier is is kind of jank. Yeah, it really is. And I'm like, I guess this shows where flavor comes through, <laughs> but. This is interesting. I always thought it was fun to see all the kitties. Play with rose water for a bit. That would be 
good in a chocolate strawberry cake. It's really strong though. Yes. Mm. Rose water is very strong, as is orange blossom water. Yes. Oh my gosh. Very Be great flavor. With Neroli. Yeah. Right? Is that good, babes? Yeah, I finished my cake too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Look at me. I'm finishing everything today. I think that's the Chef Beardman Live first, guys, where I finished all three courses of the food and didn't leave anything on my plate. Mm -hmm. I did good. That doesn't happen. And we're doing really good on time, too, guys. I was going to say, it's been 90 minutes? Not even. We went live at 5.30, so yeah, 90 minutes, yeah. So I think we're going to finish up our drinks here, guys, and uh, we're going to call tonight. Mm -hmm. um, thanks for joining us live tonight, guys, on, here on Chef Beard Man Live on YouTube. Remember to like, subscribe, hit the bell icon, and we'll come back at you in probably about two weeks with another one. And with Happy Girl Mantra, Odin, and myself, have a good one, guys. We love you. Night. Good night. Thanks for watching.